There's no way back. King Charles was cornered by spoiled Harry. Does the counterattack begin? With the Duke of Sussex fighting lawsuits and with the threat of another book hovering, the king has been backed into a corner with nowhere to go. King Charles is a man who, unfortunately, is no stranger to what his foot tastes like because he is regularly putting it directly into his mouth. For example, way back in 1981, Charles had hardly even been publicly engaged to Diana Spencer for a matter of hours when he managed to really mess things up when, attempting to sound profound, he wheeled out the line, whatever in love means. And that wasn't the end of it. Then in 1993, he was caught on tape joking about ending up as a tampon. And then a year later, he let the entire world know about his extramarital affair. In 2005, Charles was recorded complaining about the press, referring to them as bloody people and awful. And then last year, only a few days into his accession, he had not one but two pen-related temper tantrums. So words have been getting Charles into trouble for a long time, and now there are a few little words making his life even more difficult. And the words I'm talking about are his and her royal highness. Now, the ability to use their HRHs was one of the many things that Harry and Meghan were forced to give up back in 2020. And at the time, it seemed like a smart move for Her Late Majesty and Charles to tell them they've got to ditch the designation. But as we have seen, a lot can happen in only a few years. And now it looks like Charles is paying quite a high price for Meghan and Harry's HRH light existence. Now, officially, they've still got their HRHs, but they're not allowed to actually use them. And the same thing goes for Prince Andrew. Let's think back to January of 2020, when the whole world found out about Megxit through an Instagram post. Now, the late queen, faced with Meghan and Harry's half-in, half-out idea of a working model, decided that they needed to choose one way or the other. Well, they decided that they wanted to try their luck outside of the royal family, so Her Late Majesty and Charles forced them to give up their HRHs. The palace was thinking, all right, if we take away this privilege, it's going to create something of a firebreak between their money-making antics and the monarchy. And that idea made a lot of sense, because then Meghan and Harry ran away to the U.S., they discovered they would have to pay for their own lives, and so they proceeded to sign all these lucrative commercial deals with people like Spotify and Netflix and Penguin Random House. But now, after Megan and Harry have basically been cut loose, and after they have lost the right to use their HRHs, and then Charles proceeded to kick them out of their UK home, he doesn't really have any real leverage anymore. The loss of the HRH may have been a bit of a blow to just how marketable a prospect Megan and Harry may be, but it also freed Harry from the royal yoke and the conventions that govern the first 35 years of his life. Last week in a London court, Harry became the most senior member of the royal family since Charles I took on Parliament to go after the government, labeling the UK government right now as being at rock bottom. There have been many newsmaking firsts, and this was just another added to the list. As the Sunday Times royal editor Roy Anika wrote, too many, his comment was woefully misjudged. Others saw it as unconstitutional. But does anybody believe that Harry's actually worried about the repercussions from this little statement? Probably not. Instead, I would just wonder if the clucking tongues of Westminster and Fleet Street might only upset him a little to galvanize him to go even further down the path that he has chosen. Looking back, the late Queen and Charles, in taking steps to protect the monarchy and also depriving Meghan and Harry of the HRHs for day-to-day -day use, has actually turned out to be a double-edged sword. As Roy Anika reported this week, if the past three years have shown anything since the Sussex has stepped down from royal duties, it is that banning them from using their HRH titles has only emboldened them to take on all the battles that royal life once prevented them from entering. Indeed, over the last seven months, we have seen Harry be on this truth-telling adventure, trying to hold both the firm and the British press to account for a variety of sins, He's complained about lots of stuff, including him and Meghan having to buy their own sofa on a credit card, and then he is alleging that he was repeatedly hacked. Considering everything that Harry wrote in Spare, and also the three big cases that he has filed against UK publishers, among other lawsuits, obviously Harry is willing to wage war on numerous fronts, and he claims that he is just trying to do what is right. 
So for better or worse, it does seem like Harry is determined to fight his various fights until, of course, the checks for his London lawyer start to bounce. Or maybe at some point the judges are just not going to put up with his nonsense anymore. Who knows? But this could be only the beginning. Through his three witness statements, Harry has already written thousands of words. He's already revealed that his older brother, Prince William, privately settled with NGN back in 2020, receiving, quote, a very large sum of money. And he also said that Charles intervened when the late queen had decided to pursue legal action. So with that in mind, who knows what kind of nuclear warheads Harry is getting ready to launch at the media, the government, and at his own family. Knowing all that, maybe somebody should go check and see if the palace bomb shelter is still livable. Charles and Camilla might be heading down there very soon. And then there's the problem of Harry the Rider, a man who has shown that the MacBook can be a lot mightier than the crown sometimes. Royal biographer and writer Christopher Wilson, speaking with the Daily Mail, has reported that Harry's deal with Penguin Random House, quote, worth upwards of 22 million pounds, requires him to produce at least one more book and soon. Back in January, The Telegraph's Bryony e. Gordon interviewed Harry for his memoir's release, and she revealed that, quote, the first draft was 800 pages, whereas the finished manuscript is just over 400. And she claimed that Harry had said, quote, it could have been two books, put it that way. Now, they cut out some episodes due to space, but obviously there's a lot more that Harry has to say. Harry told Gordon, there are some things that have happened, especially between me and my brother, and to some extent between me and my father, that I just don't want the world to know, because I don't think they would ever forgive me. Well, if there's going to be a book too, it looks like it could be very dangerous for the royal family. And in all of this mess, it looks like Charles just doesn't know what to do. With Meghan and Harry's HRHs now stashed somewhere in the palace attic, it looks like the king cannot use that to try to force Harry and Meghan back into line. So Charles and the rest of them, having done their best to distance the palace from Harry and Meghan, has basically relinquished any means of exerting any pressure on them. Now they are basically free to cause as many problems for the royal family as they want to. As Nika writes, However unconstitutional the Sussex's words or deeds, the punishment is unlikely to be heavier than fiddling with seating plans for the occasional state occasion. Harry has gone to war on two separate occasions, and he's basically the first senior member of the royal family to skip out on the monarchy since Edward II's wife Isabella of France dumped him and moved back to Paris back in the 14th century. Somehow, though, I don't believe that threatening Harry with being left in the third row for some kind of church service is going to be enough to convince him that he needs to act right. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a lovely weekend, and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.